Hey everybody, it's Angie and welcome to Hot and Flashy. In today's video, I've got another installment in the Makeup 101 for Mature Beginners series. If you missed the first two videos in this series, it's probably because I did them a while ago. I don't know why it's taking me so long to crank these out, but anyway, I'm going to hit them uh, more frequently this year so that we can get our Mature Beginner Makeup series going. So the first one was a tutorial that showed you how to do a basic no makeup makeup look, but it didn't include eyeshadow. And so a lot of people wanted to know about a basic eyeshadow look. So that's what we're going to do today. Today's video is a simple three-step eyeshadow look. This is specifically for, as the title would, and for mature beginners. So I know that there's a lot of people out there who grew up in the 70s and 80s like I did and just didn't wear makeup or maybe you wore a lot of makeup or a medium amount of makeup but the same way that you applied it and the colors that you used and the products that you used back then just don't apply anymore. So it can be frustrating to watch a lot of makeup tutorials from younger people because they don't struggle with the same problems with their eyelids that us more mature people do. So you may have sagging you may have crepey skin, you may have discolorations like freckles and age spots and veins showing through up there. I mean, your eyelid skin is some of the thinnest skin on your body and it definitely starts showing the signs of aging first, especially since most people don't put sunscreen there. So I've left my eyelids bare for the start of this video just to show you what my canvas looks like, what I'm dealing with. So why don't we come in a little bit closer because I'm gonna wanna show you up close what we're doing in this video. All right, I hope that's gonna be close enough so that we'll all be able to see what I'm doing. So I wear tinted sunscreen every day and I do put it on my eyelids. So the sunscreen I have on my eyelids today is from Color Science. It's their Total Eye 3-in-1 Renewal Therapy. This is an SPF 35 and it's tinted and it's a nice light peachy tint and so I like to use it on my eyelids as well as underneath my eyes because it does start color correcting a lot of the things on my eyelids that you know I want to hide but it does tend to gather up in the crease a little bit so I'm just going to smudge that out with my fingers. When I lift up my eyes you can see a nice smooth canvas there to put eyeshadow on but when I relax my eyebrows, let my face relax, then the skin becomes crepey. It gets these funny folds and creases in interesting places, and I also have some sagging of my hood. So we will be tackling how to make that hood look like it recedes in this one while doing a quick three-step powder eyeshadow routine. So the supplies you're going to need in place for this one are an eyeshadow primer. I can't stress an eyeshadow primer enough for older lids especially because it's going to help your eyeshadow to go on smoother, it's going to help it to last longer, it's going to help to start color correcting your eyelids, and it's also going to keep your eyeshadow looking fresher longer, the color payout is going to be truer, and it's going to keep your eyeshadow from creasing. So these are two of my favorites. This one is from the drugstore, it's the CoverGirl Lid Lockup. This one is from Fenty. It is their Amplify Primer. This one's a pinky color. This one's a whitish color. They both work great. I'm going to go ahead and use the Fenty because this is my favorite. It's kind of my holy grail. So I just do a swipe of that on each lid. I try to avoid getting it on my eyelashes because it does make my eyelashes stick together if I get it there. And then I'm just going to take my finger and just rub that all over the movable part of my lid and up all over the whole rest of my lid up to my eyebrows and then down again to my lashes. And I want to be sure to put that everywhere so that it starts uniformly color correcting and giving me a uniform surface to apply my eyeshadow to. So if I only were to put it on my eyelid here but not put it up here, when I started to blend my eyeshadow there would be a difference in the texture of the two areas and you might see a difference in the way that your eyeshadow goes on. So that's why you want to have it be completely all over that area. Use the warmth of your finger to pat it and blend it in. You'll feel that it's a little sticky and so you may need to give it a minute to set up before you start blending your eyeshadows into it. I did a whole video testing eyelid primers and a lot of them made my eyelids look drier, made my eyelids look crepier. So definitely check your eyelid primer if you're using one. You know, look in the mirror and see how it actually makes your eyelid look. This one makes my eyelid look nice and smooth and crease free. It also makes it look hydrated. All right, so step one is done already. So steps two and three are gonna be our eyeshadow. What I want you to do is pick two shades of eyeshadow. I've got a couple 
couple of little eyeshadow singles here. These are from Makeup Geek. You can get something like a little eyeshadow duo like this. This one's from Clinique. Smashbox has these little trios where you would just use the medium and the light shade. And if you're working with a larger palette, you would just select one of the lightest shades and then one of the medium shades. I'm gonna go ahead and use the individual shadow pans. This is a Makeup Geek shadow. These retail for a little over $5 a shadow. And you can pick like three or four of these and make your own little mini palette. You can order them individually. These are great. So you're also going to need a brush to apply this. My favorite lid shader is from IT Cosmetics. It's their 112 all over shader. You basically need a brush that has shorter kind of stiff hairs. It should be fairly soft though and it should be fairly clean. This kind of brush I only use for my palest shades. That way I don't have to wash it that often. It's always just has like some shade of white or off-white on it. So you're just going to take this brush and dip it into the shadow. I like to pack on color on both sides of the brush and then you're going to want to tap off your brush. So I'm just going to tap it off here on my hand and you just want to do that so that any extra eyeshadow falls off the brush and out into the air or onto your vanity table and doesn't fall onto your cheek. So where this is the lighter color, we're gonna apply this to the movable part of our lid. The movable part of your lid is everything from your crease down to your eyelashes, okay? And this is what's gonna help to make that part of your lid, which is now getting swallowed up by your hood hanging forward on it or by wrinkles. So light colors make things appear larger and make them appear to come forward and darker colors make things appear smaller and appear to recede. So basically we want our lid to come forward. We want it to look lighter and brighter and that will help our eyes to look a little more awake. And where you want your mirror to be placed is you want it to be a little bit below eye level so that you can kind of look down down into it and that way your eye is already naturally kind of closed down. Um, the other thing you can do of course is lift up your eyebrow. If you don't have that much control over your uh, muscles up there because of Botox or whatever, you can reach over with your other hand, you can grab your eyebrow and you can pull that up a little bit. So I'm just going to look down into my mirror and raise my brow a little bit. I'm just going to pack this on the movable part of my lid with little tapping motions. I'm not doing a windshield wiper, and you wanna go all the way from the inner corner to the outer corner. Now the other motion that you can use besides just a patting and tapping motion is you can start at the top part of your crease and you can pull down to your eyelashes. You're usually not gonna create any kind of wrinkles by pulling down with your brush, whereas if you're going across like this, you're gonna cause some skipping. See, when I push my brush like this, how I get those wrinkles in there. Do we need to come in closer? Okay, so can you see how if I push my brush like this, it makes all these wrinkles appear? And when I put the eyeshadow on like that, the eyeshadow is just gonna hit the tops of those and it's not gonna go in the deeper parts and so it's gonna cause skipping. So we don't want that. So you just wanna start in the crease and pull down. And you're kind of going for increasing the size of your movable lid. So if you put it way up underneath your orbital bone, that's kind of how you can find your crease and then just pull that down. So you want this to round out the entire top orb of your eyeball. So if you kind of follow the curve of your eyeball, that is where you want that paler color to go up to. I know that's a long time explaining just where to put the lighter color, right? But this is what people ask for. People wanted to know exactly what motions to use and where exactly to put it. And obviously the shades that you choose is going to be more personal preference if you want something that's lighter, something that's pinker, something that is cooler. It's going to depend on your skin tone and what your personal preference is for makeup. Now when you get to the inner corner, I want you to really spend a little time making tiny little circular motions right there and blending that out. That's another trouble spot where I end up getting little creases in my eyeshadow because that skin is particularly crepey in there. You can lift it up with your fingers. Just make sure that you've got all the wrinkles smoothed out there 
All right, so then the next shade I'm gonna use is going to be about my skin tone, maybe one to two shades darker than my skin tone. You don't really wanna to go too much darker than that, otherwise you can end up looking a little too theatrical and a little too smoky. And this is like a simple out the door everyday look. Once you get these techniques down, then you can start going into darker colors, more colorful colors, but I think it's important to just do this real basic look so that you can just do this every single day until you really get the hang of it and then you'll be doing it like whoosh, whoosh, and you'll be out the door and then you'll be dying to do you know more complicated looks and then you can add in a third color or a fourth color so this shade is called creme brulee and of course you need a brush to put that on with my favorite is the mac 221 brush so the head on this is longer and it tapers in at the end this is a crease brush so this is a great brush because you can apply eyeshadow with it and you can also blend eyeshadow with it so you only need this one brush to do the whole rest of the eyeshadow a brush with a smaller head like this can really help to just place the eyeshadow right where you want it but it's soft and fluffy enough that you can blend the outer edges to make it look a little more natural so we're just going to dip into the creme brulee color you don't want to pick up too much I feel like it's better to start softer and build. So again, tap the brush off to get off any excess because you don't want any fallout. This shade is going to go deep into the crease and above the crease. We're gonna try not to get any of this where we have just put that lighter color. So everything from that crease down, we're gonna try to leave light and bright. So I like to start this right at the outer corner, right at the top of the crease and I just work it in small circular motions and I just follow that crease right along and my circles are going up onto this puffy part of my eyelid. I'm not blending it down in here. And then I'm gonna follow that arc right around. Now how far in you go here will depend on your face and how you like your eyeshadow. I have like a double crease here. I have my lower crease here and then I have this upper crease here. Where that one ends is kind of where I want to end with the eyeshadow. And then I'm just going to go back the other way. If you're doing those tiny circles and your skin isn't tugging and isn't moving and isn't creating folds, then you're golden. If your skin is moving and folding, then you're going to want to reach up you're gonna to wanna to place four fingers on your eyebrows so that you're getting even lift here because you don't wanna be like just lifting here but leaving this part able to move. So you wanna just tighten up the entire surface like that. And then you just wanna go back into the lower part and just make those nice circular motions again. And you can see we're already starting to make this recede, but you can also see if you look right into your mirror that I didn't really go up high enough with it so I'm not gonna dip back into the eyeshadow to do this part. I'm just gonna take whatever is left on the brush and now I'm going to run it across that skin that looks like it's really pushing forward. So we wanna make that big poof of skin up there recede. So now we can go back in to the eyeshadow, pick up a little bit more, maybe load a little bit more onto the brush. Don't forget to tap it off. And you're just gonna repeat the same steps, going in the exact same places. You just wanna keep building and building the color until you have the amount that you want. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna put it right in that deepest part of the crease again. You can feel free to do the windshield wiper as long as you're getting a nice smooth canvas there. Now if you want, you can pull a little bit of that down onto your movable lid at the outer corner, but don't take this too far out. You don't wanna bring your eyeshadow way out here. You wanna draw an imaginary line between the corner of your eye and the corner of your eyebrow, and you wanna keep everything inside there, and that is gonna to help to lift the outer corner of your eye up. So we want everything to be lifting up. And you see how we're starting to build some darkness in the crease? Because it's a crease, it will naturally be a little bit darker because it is in shadow. I'm trying to get this like almost all the way up to my eyebrow, but I just want to leave the tiniest little, like less than a quarter inch, an eighth of an inch of light brightness there. So you want to keep most of the eyeshadow that you're depositing color deep in the crease and then you just wanna use whatever's left on the brush to blend out these parts. And just do it so lightly with such tiny sweeping motions, and you basically wanna make an upside down number seven. So this would be the tall part of the seven, and then you drag it straight down. So across and down. 
what people call the outer V. If you want to really brighten up the inner part of this eye and the lid, you can go back in with the IT Cosmetics brush and the same pale shade, and you can just work that back in there to make it a little bit lighter and a little bit brighter. And then just blend over that edge with the MAC 221. All right, so see the difference between my eyes? This one, this whole poofy part looks huge. It looks like it's really coming forward because it's all light and bright. This side, it's got that nice sculpted look. All right, when you're finished, look for any fallout in your close-up mirror. You shouldn't really have any. I see that I have like a little something there. I just use a big fluffy fan brush and brush away anything. So another thing I notice is that when I'm using a lighter color eyeshadow, sometimes it will deposit down here underneath my eye and it will then start to crease. So I just go in with the Real Techniques setting brush and I'll just gently rub the inner corner. All right, let me go ahead and do my eyeliner and my mascara and then we will wrap this one up. All right, so that is the three-step easy mature beginner eyeshadow tutorial for today. If you're looking for other tutorials, I have more in-depth things for mature skin. I've got one on how to stop your under eye concealer from creasing. I've got one on how to lift your eyes using eyeliner and eyeshadow. So that would be for a little more advanced. So once you get comfortable with this one, you can move on into more colors, more shimmers, more things. But this is going to be the basis of every eyeshadow look is being able to blend that crease and keep the lid pale and light. And how to do that without skipping is really the key to mature makeup. So anyway, I hope you have great success with your makeup. If you are interested in purchasing any of the tools or makeup shades from today's video, all the links will be in the information box below the video for quick and easy shopping. So if you enjoyed the video, found it helpful and informative, go ahead and give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell. As always, I thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate you watching. Have a great day and I will see you in the next video. Take care everybody. Bye-bye.